Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mbak. Nope, it's not Mike. <laughs> it's not Mbak. It's Mike <laughs> from Alpha Reptiles. Back in another video today. And today we're doing a live stream. Those of you that can make it out live, that's wicked. If not, and you're watching the replay, welcome. I am going to be covering the topic of bioactive vivariums and just kind of some of the basics as to what you need, what you want, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, make sure you, uh, if you're here now, click that like button, share it to your Facebook, share it to your friends, do whatever you're looking to do. Uh, that would be wicked. And then I will say that because it is summer, I do still have a couple of these uh, chameleon tank tops for sale. Uh, these are just simple tank tops. Uh, if you're interested in buying one for yourself, I can ship worldwide because it's actually me selling them, but it will cost you. So uh, there's a link to my email in the description down below. You guys can go check that out and let me know if you're interested. Okay? Okay. Uh, with that being said, I think we're just going to basically have a chat with you guys about kind of the ins and outs of vivariums, uh, like what things you need to consider, substrates, lighting, uh, your inhabitants, the apex predator, if you want to call it that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. So, I'm going to drag you guys straight down, and we're going to just do this while looking at the dart frog tank because I feel like that's mildly more interested than staring at my dumb face for the next 15 to 20 minutes uh, if you guys I will mention though if you guys are interested and you have like a burning question or really just want to support me then there is a super chat option you basically donate to the reptile room here and I use it to feed everybody uh, buy new camera equipment just kind of make the overall channel better so if you want to do that before I start the Patreon, hopefully, uh, then that is one way to support me. So, I want to thank you guys all for being here, and why don't we get into this video? Alrighty. So, I will open this tank, because it seems kind of silly to have it closed like that. There we go. So I'm not going to be really answering too many questions or paying all that much attention to the chat in the beginning of this video. So if you have any burning questions, make sure that you uh, just save it for the end, alrighty? Alrighty. Uh, now, you guys know that the concept of bioactive vivariums is definitely one of the most I guess, prominent rising factors in reptile and amphibian husbandry. It's becoming more and more common to see people keeping all sorts of animals in bioactive setups. And that's a great thing to see. Basically, uh, if you're wondering what a bioactive vivarium is, it is aimed at mimicking or recreating their natural environment with uh, custodians or uh, like a relationship between living soil and living organisms in that soil to kind of flush out the vivarium of waste and recycle it for plants, which is also another requirement of a bioactive vivarium. Uh, these plants are basically fed from nutrient-dense soils as well as the invertebrates that you add in your cleanup crew to... Man, those guys are loud. To having these guys uh, recycle the nutrients through the waste of your organism or apex predator. And then put it back into the plants. The plants grow. Y you get the point. It's a cyclic process. You guys see him up there? Ah. <laughs> but in this video, what I'm going to be covering is kind of the basics. And I will be turning to the chat here shortly. Do not worry. Uh, I will be turning to the chat for questions as well as just kind of making this video progress. If you guys have specific questions about anything, I can answer that for you guys. But we're going to be talking about the apex predator or the inhabitant that you decide to put in there. We're going to be talking about uh, the substrate. We're going to be talking about the cleanup crew, live plants, and even the lights that you should be using on your enclosure. So I don't know if you guys can, I'll back you guys up a little bit here. There we go. 
But I have, you can see the frog in there. I have several vivariums all around the room. Even the Clemri has a cleanup crew. Tig certainly has a cleanup crew. Pretty much all my vivariums are bioactive. Uh, the only one that really isn't is um, Sky, Bowser, and that's pretty much it, honestly. Now, something you have to keep in mind if you're doing bioactive is there's different kinds. You guys can see here, this is obviously a tropical setup with dart frogs in it. It's very lush and green. This tank is only about a year and a bit old, so it's really not fully matured even yet. Um, but you can see the plants are growing wild. The frogs are loving it. Uh, he's probably just looking for food, to be honest, but <laughs> he'll get it in a little bit. And then there's also something like... Yoink! There's also desert or arid setups, which are much different, uh, require quite different parameters as well as a different cleanup crew, but we can talk about that in a little bit. Because right now I'm going to be focusing on the tropical vivariums. So obviously the first thing you're going to need when setting up your terrarium or vivarium is the cage itself. And you can see here that this cage is an 18, well, you can't see that, but this cage is an 18 by 18 by 18 exoterra. Uh, it is lit by the uh, LED light you can see up here. And it's plumbed for automatic misting, but I have not set up automatic misting on any of my enclosures yet because I don't actually have a good reason. Honestly, I just haven't done it because, I, yeah, I haven't done it. <laughs> Uh, I strongly recommend it though, especially if you have as, as many animals as I have. Spending 100 or 150 bucks on a, uh, a little bit of a automatic mister is certainly useful. Uh, but the next most important thing of the, uh, I guess, process of setting up the vivarium is starting with a good base. So in here, you guys can see that, well, maybe you can't really see... But basically, under all of this leaf litter is substrate. Now, the substrate in this tank, I believe I filmed it all. I don't know exactly what I uh, made it out of. But it would be a mixture of carbon, coconut core. Uh, I believe I used some aqua soils from fish tanks. Uh, what else would I have used in here? I would have used... Um, peat moss, I would have used coconut, uh, like the chunks of coconut, I would have used a bunch of different additives, and basically what you're looking for, uh, no MC Exotics, there was no tree fern in this one, but uh, basically what you're looking for is a soil that is rich in nutrients, drains really well, and also holds moisture. So I know drain really well and holds moisture is kind of an oxymoron, but that's basically what you're looking for. You're trying to have something set up to where you can actually uh, have a nutrient dense soil that drains well but not so well that it's just like sand where everything just flows through and it's gone so that's kind of a a happy medium uh, and that's why in a bioactive vivarium you have a drainage layer so that you can uh actually so that any excess water that you're pumping in there drains off rather than being uh, saturated and making your tank go anorex anorexic. Jesus, anaerobic. Uh, <laughs> yikes. Uh, <laughs> uh, what else can we talk about here? Uh, if you're looking for kind of pre-made blends and especially for uh, the Arid Mix, there's the Arcadia Earth Mix Arid. There's Arcadia Earth Mix, which I have not used the Earth Mix. Uh, next time it comes in, I might set it up in some of my enclosures, but uh, we get very sporadic shipments of it here in Canada, so that kind of sucks. But uh, yeah, the Earth Mix Arid is what I use on... on Mr. Boy over here, this is what the Earth Mix Arid looks like. Uh, it is an Earth Mix. <laughs> I, 
It's basically uh, volcanic ash, uh, volcanic rock. Uh, there is like peat moss and various different soil additives to make this a nutrient dense, drainage heavy type of soil for arid plants as well as arid organisms. Ooh, look at that poster. What up? Uh, and yeah, so that's what I recommend. If you guys are just looking for something quick and easy, then that is definitely the way to go. Now, uh, I will answer all of your questions. So if you guys have questions about the uh, anything, really, I can answer it towards the end of the stream. Uh, there shouldn't be too much talking left. I will be relying on you guys for questions here in maybe five five minutes or so. So hold tight and we'll we'll continue on with the next topic, and that is the cleanup crew. Now the cleanup crew is obviously one of the most important parts of your bioactive vivarium because there's gonna because they are gonna be doing all of the recycling, breaking down of waste, and you know the I guess, cleaning of the terrarium. They're going to be going through breaking down mold, breaking down rotting plants. All that kind of shebang is what they're going to be handling. And that is something that is very beneficial for your animals because, uh, like, springtails and stuff will be consumed by the offspring of, uh, like, these guys. These guys are the Ufaga pumilio. And uh, their offspring basically will eat the springtails and these guys will eat them as well. Whereas these guys are much bigger. So they're going to be eating things like isopods and whatnot. So as much as the vivarium cleanup crew will help be a, I guess, a cleanup crew, they will also be a mode of food for your organisms and they will be depleted or not, depending on how many animals and how long you allowed the bioactive uh, cleanup crew to establish in the tank. So like I said, members of the cleanup crew include, uh, for the bioactive vivariums, you can do, I've heard some people do millipedes, there's little tiny millipedes that you can buy. I don't know if I recommend that because they're pretty heavy plant eaters. But you can definitely do isopods, springtails. You can do, um, if you're in the UK, morio worms, which are like super worms. Uh, you can do those in the more arid setups. You can do uh, red wigglers. There's a whole host of cleanup crew, I guess, crew members, whatever you want to call them, that uh, can be used for your bioactive vibarium. Uh, and then I think we're almost pretty much done. Uh, the last couple things that we need to talk about is lighting. Lighting is something that is crucial for your vivarium. Now, if you have stuff like this, uh, the setup you see here, you're just going to have an LED, have a glass top as well as an LED on top of it. And that is growing all of these plants in here. Uh, the LED is a Phoenix... Uh, 24 hour or 24 7 planted plus uh, Phoenix light fixture and you can buy it on Amazon I think it was about $70 American uh, and I just had it shipped up to here to Canada they work fine they work great they're not necessarily the brightest light so if you're looking to get some really cool colors out of your bromeliads you might not necessarily get that but they will certainly grow plants as you guys can see I mean like this tank is just chalk block full of um, selaginella. It's actually getting kind of out of control. I need to go through here and trim again. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's it's pretty full. And lighting is something that you need to consider. Now with dart frogs, it's pretty easy because a lot of people aren't providing them with UVB. However, uh, if you have a reptile or something alike that requires UVB, you need to add both UVB and a plant growth material because UVB bulbs typically don't actually grow plants very well. Uh, they're tuned to a different uh, nanometer length than what the plants will use. So a lot of times you'll end up burning your plants or just straight off killing them because essentially there's not that much usable light. Now it is possible to provide UVB as well as a 6500 Kelvin bulb. 
but uh, that's just something that you need to take into consideration. So that is all I really had to say about bioactive vivariums. Keep in mind, this is a live video for those of you that were watching. Uh, I do plan on making more of an in-depth kind of breaking down of vi uh, bi <laughs> bioactive vivarium here in the near future. But I just figured I would do this live stream for you all today and answer some of your questions, hang out for a little bit. And with that said, uh, would you guys rather see my face now, now that I'm answering questions, or would you rather continue looking at uh, vivariums and or, uh, I guess, other reptiles? It was close. Reptiles? Well, uh, might be able to get you some of them. Hello from Canada. I'll turn into my face for a little bit. <laughs> What's up, Ireland? Hi, Chris Beard. Bird? My bad. Yeah, so if you guys have questions for me, I'll be answering them right now. Um, don't forget, if you want to help support the, the fam here, you guys can do so by using Super Chat. $2, $10, whatever. Uh, it's all beneficial. If not, I understand. And uh, we'll just continue doing the videos every day. Good lord, they're so loud. Sorry. That just made it worse. Mm. That's better. Alrighty, here we go, here we go. Where can I buy isopods uh, from? Is it worth starting and selling them? Uh, you can if you want, it really depends where you live. What is the most active lizard or frog? Uh, dart frogs are pretty active. Uh, most other frogs are nocturnal, so they'll be out or crepuscular slash nocturnal. You live in Ohio? Oh, you can buy them all over the place. I know, like, Vivariums in the Mist sells them. I'm pretty sure Glassbox Tropical sell them. I'm pretty sure Josh's Frog sell them. You can buy them all over the place in the States. Honestly, you might even be able to buy them on, like, uh, Craigslist or something. <laughs> So what is my favorite vivarium plant? Uh, probably bromeliads. That's probably my favorite one. Mushrooms and vivariums? Yeah, you can do that. Can you house a leopard gecko in a terrarium of 150 by 50? So that's like a foot and a half by... Uh, three feet, maybe? Yeah, you could definitely house one in there. My favorite reptile? Man, my hair is terrible. <laughs> favorite reptile uh, in the room? I don't really know. There's so many. I think Clem and I are pretty high up there. If we're just talking like species specific, probably Clem and I. Where do I get my Brahms? Uh, uh, my buddy orders them from the States and then I buy them in bulk and then sell them and keep some for myself. But... I haven't done that this year, so I don't really have that many Brahms, honestly. Hey, what's up, BF Cubes? Can you guys hear that? It's ridiculous. Yeah, we're going to be live for a little bit longer if you guys have questions. I just have to be open and honest. I've been going through like this crazy researching of parrots phase. It's bad. I'm sitting here. There's a ki there's a white-breasted kaik on Kijiji right now, and I'm sitting here, like, uh, don't buy it. I need to do enough research to where I understand what I'm doing and understand what I'm getting myself into if I was to do it. But I think my parents would kibosh that idea pretty quick. You leaving now? All right, later. 
I love the dark frog calls. Would you ever own a species of frog, possibly tree frogs? I would, but tree frogs aren't, like, my favorite because I, the nice part about the dart frogs is that they are diurnal. Uh, they are... Get some prawns, homie. Yeah, I know. You need some, don't you? Um, they are diurnal, so the calling only happens during the day. Whereas at night, in tree frogs, it's opposite. They're pretty much only active at night. And I don't know if that's something that I'm really looking for, to be totally honest. Uh, do I ever plan on coming to Ireland? Um, maybe. I mean, there's not much, there's not much wildlife up there. But, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to shut down the idea. There's a lot of places I would go before Ireland, though. I know Ireland is beautiful. And the people are dope, but... Do I know a lot about leaf chameleons? Uh, depends what you need to know. I mean, I've kept them before. They're pretty easy, pretty short-lived chameleons, so... Do I, have com do I have advice on convincing your parents about getting a gecko? Just, you know, do your research, prove to them that you can take care of it. If, excuse me, if they're petrified of geckos, then you might have a lesser shot of actually acquiring some of them because uh, it can be kind of tough. Here, hold on, let's... There we go, that's better. <laughs> have I heard of marsupial frogs? Uh, I, th I think I've heard of them, but I'm not like picturing them in my head, you know? I definitely, yeah, I know, I'm sorry. It's a cheap tripod. What beginner dart frog would I recommend? I need to make that video still, don't I? I don't think I've actually made that video. Uh, but yes, I would recommend Dendrobates erratus, Tinctorius, uh, Tinctorius, and Leucomelos as beginners. If you're used to keeping like high humidity organisms and you're pretty well versed in the whole vivarium building for reptiles and stuff, you could probably do like Ranitomea and stuff like that as well. There's not dart frogs really aren't that hard. They're actually super super easy. <laughs> Is it possible to do a box turtle vivarium? It can be, uh, just they will, they're omnivorous and more to like the carnivorous side. So they might eat some of the plants, but it's still definitely doable. How long do they live? Can they live in pairs or individuals? What do they eat? What is their temperature? So you've literally done no research on them. <laughs> that stuff's all available. I can promise you that. Uh, they live a couple years. They eat stuff small enough for them, fruit flies, very small crickets, that kind of stuff. Temps, room temperature-ish, UVB, yes. Um, yeah. Do I ever plan on getting turtles? There is one species of turtle that I would buy, and apparently uh, Cody actually brought them in to work one, one year, like I think the year before I started. And they sat there for years, and or not years, but like many, many, many months. And they had a sale on them where they sold both for I think like six or eight hundred, like together. And they are Geosperma spangleri, or the black-breasted leaf turtle. Those are the only turtles that I would buy. Uh, uh, well, if it was like legal, I guess, to own uh, fly rivers, I might have one of those, but... Other turtles are just so much work for, for me, really not that much, to be honest. African fire skinks. Oh, they're cool. What is my most expensive reptile? Like, the most one, the most expensive that I paid for, or, like, worth the most? Uh, I think the most expensive one I paid for was... Well, Sheldon was four fifty. Bane was five fifty on like a hell of a deal, and Bowser was four fifty. So I guess it would be Bane. He was also asking if he could keep them with dart frogs and Clemmy. I'm good, McNamma. I'm sorry. Thanks. Yeah, that's a hell of a deal. Mine was 550 shipped, which is insane. 
I'm um, in Sardinia. There's a gecko chilling. Cool. Mm. Alright, you guys. Stream might be coming to an end if there's not many questions. <sighs> it's not easy, BF. It's not easy. Um, kind of depends on your parents, too. Like, mine are kind of lenient. Um, but... It, like, there's some parents that are just like, No! I said no. That's it. Uh, well, that's my parents with, like, snakes and tarantulas and stuff. Like, it'll just never happen. <laughs> uh, if roaches weren't illegal here, probably not. <laughs> Honestly, acid. Acid monkeys. Nice. I would get dubias and breed dubias, but... How much did I pay for the Clemri? Uh, I think they were... 375 for the pair and then um that was shipped from Europe to Canada and then it was another like $120 to ship them from Ontario to me. So altogether call it like 500 bucks ish. I have a tank right behind me that I'm going to be working on right after this. I don't know if I want to show it. Yeah, there's nothing down there. See, right there there uh Aaron it'd be more reptiles um I mean I had the crazy idea yesterday while playing Fortnite of of selling my erotus and stuff um I would keep my El Morente just because I really like them and I'd make them like a new Viv but I, like, I love dart frogs, and I want to keep them. I just don't know if I want to keep um, the super, like, basic kind of stuff. Uh, I also want to get more reptiles, but... I'm also starting to do research on that freaking parrot. And it's driving me nuts. But I don't think the parrot's really in the cards, to be totally honest. I think that'd be probably a bad idea. Glass frogs are cool. Some of your raddest dog. <laughs> uh, ever had an interest in... Yeah, I've thought about it. I've thought about setting up a beta tank. Like a really nice planted beta tank. But... I just have... I, I mean, I just don't have room, honestly. Like, I have so many, like, empty tanks with plants in them that it's just like... Bruh. Why? <laughs> I'd have so much more space. Like... Yeah. I, I honestly might end up following through and just building a complete vivarium out of my greenhouse and just growing, like, as much as I can in there with maybe some, like, larger species of dart frogs or something like that. Hello, Sean. How many pets do I have? I have about 20 altogether. Actually, more than that now. I have five Elmorente, five Aratus, so we're at 10. Three, no, five Azurius, so we're at 10. Three Aratus, 13. Two Clemmer, I have 15, 16, 17, plus 4, 21, plus 3 offspring frogs, uh, so we're at 24? I lost count. 24, sure. Uh, Sheldon, 25. Uh, Stryker, 26. Dixon, 27. I have more than I thought. Uh, <laughs> I have two of the Ebonavia Ninguis. Uh, what are we at? 29. Uh, so I have 31. Yikes. If that's all of, like, the animals, you know. Zeratus are sexy. Yeah, he's, like, chilling. I don't, know. I don't know if you guys will be able to see him. Right down. Right down there is where he's chilling at. Stacy Stevenson. Hello. Uh, Dura. Yikes. Uh, yes, I do watch Cam Kevin. You can see the great stuff still. What? How can you hide that? You can just paint the sides of your vivarium black, and then it hides it. 
That's what I do. Or you can get like, um, what the hell is it called? Not vinyl. Yeah, I think it's vinyl. You can get like, like aquarium shops and stuff. You know how they sometimes do the back of their aquariums like black? You can apply that to your tanks and just cut it out to the shape of the foam. And then you, you black out the side. Or you can just paint it. That's what I do. Yeah, matte black vinyl. There you go. Uh, I set up my first ever vivarium after several aquariums after watching your channel. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it, Sean. That's really nice of you. I'm glad. It's it's really cool hearing that kind of stuff. Like, some people are like, oh, I got dart frogs because of your videos. Oh, I got, like, I set up my first vivarium because of your videos, you know. Whether they're actually just saying that or if it's actually true, either way, it's freaking awesome. Speaking of which, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm posting there every single day as well, so... You know, you can shoot me a follow there. But I am going to be wrapping up the stream very quickly here. I'll answer a couple more questions here. Uh, she doesn't like reptiles much. Uh, well, that's good, I guess, Stacy. <laughs> Don't get shiny. It looks awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely go mad. Do not get shiny. Uh, final. That would be terrible. Your room might smell like a bunch of reptiles. I mean, don't like. I think Hunter might still be here. It doesn't. It definitely has a different smell than other rooms, but it's not like a bad smell. Like you don't come in here and you're like, oh god. Like it, it's warmer in here. It's currently 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 45 percent humidity. Uh, where outside, it's probably like 73 degrees Celsius, and uh, Celsius, Fahrenheit, uh, <laughs> uh, and so it's not, like, bad. I, I mean, if you let your cages get absolutely disgusting, and you never clean them, and, you know, they're not bioactive, then that's a different story, but that's on you. Like, <laughs> if you're letting your tanks get that way, then tough luck, I guess. Actually true, waiting for my first ever pair of Dendrobates Tinctorius Azurus. Nice, man, that's sick, Sean. Uh, make a paladarium, make a viv. Uh, I want to really bad, but I'm waiting for the Exoterra and or Zoomed uh, paladariums to come out in Canada. How to get rid of mold? Well, you should probably go back and watch the rest of this video. I'm an idiot. That's why I do live streams on Instagram, not YouTube. <laughs> Besides Clemerai? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I've had, well, I've had Ligodactylus Williams eye, I have a pair, well, I have four, uh, Felsium Melodicata that I need to separate. But. I don't, honestly, their, their temps are a little bit higher than they probably should be, but as long as you're feeding them and they have, like, different microclimates and stuff they can get into... There you go. Uh, I also spray the Uroplatus and stuff. Uh, and the... Uh, Ebonavia and Inguis to kind of cool them down throughout the day. Uh, Alright, I'll answer like... Four or five more questions. And then we'll be done. Or maybe less. <laughs> yeah. Do I find, Aaron says, do I find yourself having to reseed the springtails in your dark? Yes. Yep. Would I get an, ever get an axolotl? No. They're cool, but I would never. I don't, I don't really own me. Uh, how do I store your locusts? I don't really, don't really know how to store them. I could make a video on it, if you want. I could post it. Uh. Even tomorrow, I guess, maybe. But, yeah, I, I could make a video on how I keep my crickets. Because I, I made one a long time ago, but it's changed a little bit since then, so. I suppose I could do that. I actually have to do my crickets right after, well, today. <laughs> Whether it's right after this or not, that's debatable, but. Uh, no, BF, I feed them a variety. 
Yesterday I had no crickets, so I cut up a super worm and fed it to him. That was gross. Okay, I'll end the stream on will I get a snake eventually. When I move out, yes. That's the simple answer. Uh, so I'm going to end the stream right here, you guys. It's been 35 minutes, so for those of us watching after, I know that's a little bit daunting. If you made it to the end of the stream, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you came out live, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. I am going to be going filming today, editing today. I'm going to be uh, actually going out with my birth mom for dinner, and then we're going to see Incredibles 2. So that'll be awesome. Uh, I want to thank you guys all for coming out. I really appreciate you. And if you're watching this on the replay and you made it to the very end, I want you to leave the... Um, leave the word Clemmeri in the comments if you actually made it this far. So I want to thank you all very much for coming. Have a good rest of your day. And we'll talk to you tomorrow in the next episode of uh, Jam Pack July.